All right, Ryder Cup just wrapped up here in Milwaukee. You can see I got my uh, Ryder Cup merchandise on. It does say Ryder Cup 2020. A little confusing because we are in 2021. But I hope you guys uh, enjoyed a little of those behind the scenes that we showed you in the previous video. If you haven't seen it, be sure to go back and check it out. Today on this flight, we're heading back to Florida with a stop in South Carolina. And we're gonna talk about my five power settings. Clearance Baron 3175 whiskeys at aft flight with Delta. Like to pick up our IFR clearance to 6 Juliet 0. 75 whiskey cleared to the 6 Juliet 0 airport via radar vectors Brave, direct Peeps, direct Bravo, Victor, Tango, and then as filed. Maintain 5,000, expect 9,000 one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 135.87, squat 6234. All right, clear to 6 Juliet 0, uh, radar vectors Brave, Pete's, Bravo, Victor, Tango, as filed, 5,000, expect 9,000, one zero minutes, 135.87, 6234. And can you read back um, the spelling of the fix after Braves for Sunfire Whiskey? Got it. I got it. It's Peeps. Baron Sunfire Whiskey affirmative. It's Peeps. Papa, Echo, Echo, Papa, Sierra. Affirm. Papa, Echo, Echo, Papa, Sierra. Sunfire Whiskey. Baron Sunfire Whiskey, read back correct. Where are you parked? Half light, Sunfire Whiskey. Roger, and the wind is 290 at 7. We just switched to one left. If you wanted 7 left, that would be available when you're ready. Uh, we can take 7 left. We can take 7 left, Sunfire Whiskey. Baron 3175 Whiskey, runway 7 left, taxi via Charlie, and information echoes current. 7 left, seven left via Charlie, and we have echo Sunfire Whiskey. All right, seven left, and we have Echo. Nice job on the clearance and the rebacks. Fantastic. I feel like because this is a big airport, I was scared that it was going to be crazy. via Romeo Tango Echo Kilo, cross two five left. But he was very nice and patient. He was very nice. But and I don't know if it, that helped. I feel like it probably does. But I felt way more confident in my comms. I was just holding short of the All right, let's go ahead and load tower in there, put departure up there. I already got squad code in. 209, roger. <clears throat> okay, so right. you said here, no water. Right, tower is zero here. zero times two. We got blue over brown. All right, tower is switched. 2975, once, twice. You're within 75 feet of altitude. We are in GPS source. We got a heading of 191. Two, five, turning through once, twice, three times. Gages are in the green. No flags. Flight controls are free and correct. Trims are set. Electrical trim is working, which is good. Baron three one seven five Whiskey Milwaukee Tower. Good morning. Are you ready to go? Good morning. Just need uh, thirty seconds for a quick run up. No problem. Let me know when you're ready. Take your time. All right, 2975, 5000 in the future. Transponder is set. Departure frequency 13587 is set. We are ready to go. Tower, Baron 3175 Whiskey, holding short of 7 left at Charlie. Baron 75 Whiskey, Roger. Uh, I'll get you going here after this arrival for runway 1 left. All right, we got someone coming in on 1 left. Then we'll sneak on out. Going to put us out over the water. Thankfully, we've got flotation devices. They're going to make us go up to 9,000, which is fine. Be there. 75 Whiskey, traffic 3 off, runway 1 left, no delay in the roll, fly runway heading, runway 7 left, clear for takeoff. No delay, runway heading, 7 left, clear for takeoff, 75 Whiskey. Alright, we are clear right, your, your door's good? Door's good, yes. All right. I know, we're like... Lights are on. Triple checking. Alright, we are clear left, we are clear right, no delay on the roll. I see 7 left, gauges are in the green. I should which way the wind is right now. And that's why I had a feeling it was wrong. What's that? Fuel price. All right, power is set, fuel flow. Gauge is in the green, airspeed is alive. Woo! Yeah, she wants to fly already. Getting off before 84 knots. Positive rate. You're yep. up. Here's up. Ugh. 
Bye. I'll take comms. 75 yep. Whiskey, turn right, heading 090, contact departure good day. Right 090, over to departure good day, 75 Whiskey. All right, 400 feet. Power back 25 squared. Mobile key departure, Baron 3175 Whiskey, 1.4, climbing 5,000 on a 090 heading. Baron 3175 Whiskey, Milwaukee departure, or radar contact. Right. All right, we're climbing out. We got 25 inches of manifold pressure, 2,500 RPM. That is our climb power setting. Some people argue you can leave the manifold pressure set wide open and be above 25 inches. I um, don't argue that. However, my instruments will start yelling at me, start flashing, and I don't like seeing any flashing. So we fly this at 25 inches of manifold pressure in the climb. And then as it goes down, we'll continue to add power. And we'll continue to, to lean. We bring the mixture back to about 1350, which is our one kilo kilo best power settings. 6,000. 6,000, one kilo. Count 3924, Mach approach 12535. So as I'm, as I'm slowly leaning, watching the EGT on my number one rise, I, I look, glance over, slowly pull back, and I keep watching my flight instruments. Don't want to focus on any one thing too long. You kind of want to continue to scan. So I'm semi-curious, if they're taking us over the water like this, I, I know I can tell we're start, we'll start to turn, but at peeps, are we, in theory, going to be 50 miles out that we would do? No. Ah, no. I think they keep us just. Whiskey, proceed direct Brave on course. Direct Brave on course, I'm a whiskey. Looks at 459 Milwaukee Approach, Milwaukee Altimeter 29 or 77, two seven zero. Vector Enter. visual approach, runway one nine All right, I see Brave. I'm sorry, visual approach, runway one left. Visual approach, one left. We got 1,000 to go. We're in 75 Whiskey, climbing to 9,000. 9,000, 75 Whiskey. All right, continue our climb at 9,000. Nine thousand is set. Proceed direct to Squib. We are now wide open throttle. District fifty five twenty eight. And we are climbing to nine thousand. All right, going to lower the nose. We're going to do what's called a cruise climb. We're just going to climb out at five hundred uh, feet per minute. Get the climb going. Five zero six. Proceed direct Squib at four fifty nine. Just going to maintain one zero thousand. Now flying over Lake think, Michigan. Uh, it's not going to work right now. I think. Um, because the water is so cold, and the it's real easy for the altitude, for the um, in the area being cold. So as you get altitude, you can get uh, freezing levels pretty easy down here. That um, when you're in the clouds, when you're in IMC over this lake, it becomes a really um, big threat for icing because there's so much moisture from the but lake. But only in the clouds. Only in the clouds. But, so you've got to be really, really careful flying over Lake Michigan in IMC when the temperatures start start dropping. Approach runway one left, contact tower one, two, four, right, continue to climb out. Our hottest cylinder head temperature is 360 degrees. Look, she had 459, turn left heading 230, reduce speed to 210. So I'd say uh, she's running nice and cool. All right, we're level 9,000 feet. Let's bring the RPMs back. Let's talk about power setting, shall we? So... I pretty much fly at 2,400 RPM for the most part. Now the trip coming up here, we flew at 2,300 RPM. But usually you see me flying at 2,400 RPM. So we're going to talk about the difference between the two power settings. So right now I'm set at 2,400 RPM. I've got wide open throttle, which is 21 inches of manifold pressure. And we're going to go ahead and let this airplane settle. And we are going to lean the engine. So I'm going to pre-lean for right now. I'm going to bring it back to 1430. bring the EGT back to 14, 1430 side as a pre-lean.
let the airplane settle. Temperatures are good. I'm going to close the cow flaps. Five whiskey. Uh, just try to maintain 8,000. It's just uh, to avoid Chicago approaches airspace, and then I can get you back up to nine in about uh, 20 or 30 miles. No problem. Reduce to 8,000. Set fire whiskey. Approach. We are in uh, Kevin and Jamie territory. I know. I'm surprised I didn't. I'm not surprised, but I was hoping <laughs> I was going to hear them. On I the know. I mean, maybe, maybe with our other route, we might have only because we're going right. closer to the Chicago area. But I actually heard Jamie on the radio when I was flying uh, in Alier. I was departing out of uh, Chicago area, and I heard her. Whiskey. I'm actually showing that you're, it's uh, slightly southwest bound, so you, you mind staying at 8,000 for uh, direction of flight? Uh, yeah, I can take the shortcut though, if you got any for me, towards my other waypoint, which will be southeast. 75 Whiskey, let's see, yep, I can do that. Uh, turn left direct Brickyard. Uh, left direct Brickyard, which uh, spelling is that? That's the next one, Victor Hotel Papa. Ah, gotcha, Victor Hotel Papa, thank you. And I'll just maintain 8,000 for now. 8,000 for now, so I was good. Victor Hotel, Papa. Yep. There, there. All right. All We're right. going. Oh, my nose I'll itches. take the shortcuts. I was going to ask for a shortcut anyways, because that should give us better winds. Because we're, we're getting a 10 knot. Whiskey, do you want to direct your destination? What's the heading to there? Ooh. Ooh. I would love direct destination, and it is a uh, standby. Southwest 200. Uh, one, okay. 153 is direct destination for Sempo Whiskey. Sempo Whiskey is a 153 heading. Affirm Sempo Whiskey. I would love direct destination. Sempo Whiskey, Roger. Uh, turn left, direct your destination. Left, direct destination. You're my favorite controller, Sempo Whiskey. <laughs> All right, I'm like, there we go. Okay, so now we're direct destination. Wait. And Sempo Whiskey, come and maintain 9,000. 9,000, Sempo Whiskey. Alright, it's comes to yours. Comes are mine. Just gonna smack my hand when I do that. Just bam! Alright, 9,000. 9,000, direct destination. And we're already getting a push. Yes, that's the tail I needed. Tailwind, let me be more specific. Whatever. <laughs> that is so beautiful outside. Yeah, it's weird how. Look how different clean this is. It is. Yeah, yeah, how different is it than our previous <laughs> flight? Like this, like this is what I was hoping for when we were heading up, and uh, instead we had craziness. But hey, if you like uh, weather videos and flying videos and figuring out how to navigate through weather, uh, be sure to visit uh, last week's video or uh, click on the link above and uh, check it out because this definitely was a a weather series actually the last two videos were definitely a weather series type videos almost every video ends up kind of being a weather series that was a little more than normal though. oh absolutely but you blame me for going and getting food so that window was closing on us pretty fast just saying all right, so we are level cruise 9,000 feet. We have an indicated airspeed of 153 knots. We have an outside air temperature of 58 degrees Fahrenheit, which is giving us a true airspeed of 180 knots at the moment. Actually, just a tad low. We usually get about 182 to 184 at this power setting. Uh, but we have a ground speed of 186 knots. We're getting a slight push. We're currently leaned out. We are burning 23.7, uh, well, between 23.7 and 23 and a half. Uh, gallons per hour, and we're getting a fuel economy of 7.9 miles per gallon. Fuel economy is a little skewed because we're getting a push, so that could change. The big numbers here to take into consideration is our true airspeed um, and our fuel flow, and then you can do the math on that. So we're saying we got a true airspeed of 180 knots, right? And we have a fuel flow of 23, we'll call it 23.5 as it keeps changing. We're getting a fuel economy of 7.9 miles per gallon, but like I said, we're gonna redo the math on that. So based on this current speeds and current configuration and everything, and we'll do the math on that, when we get to our destination, we come here and we look, we should have 48 gallons 48 of fuel when we land at the airport. 
Uh, so, just let's go ahead and change our power setting to the 2300 RPM. Now, I had a conversation with somebody who uh, was telling me that they believe that 2300 RPMs, that because the prop has a greater, uh, got a greater angle, that you're actually faster at 2300 RPMs at altitude. I don't necessarily believe that. I don't think that's true. But as, uh, three, um, four, one, we're going to do the test three, together three, and three, see if perhaps I was wrong on that because I usually fly at 2400 RPM. So let's bring it back to 2300 RPM. Okay, we're at 2300 RPMs. We're going to relean and let the airplane settle. All right, things seem to be settling out here. We've brought the RPMs back to 2300 RPM. We went ahead and relinked. Full disclaimer, this comparison, uh, my power settings are based on Richa Peak, not Lena Peak. So as it's all settled down, we seem to be at about 150 knots indicated airspeed, which has uh, lowered our true airspeed to 176 knots. So we've lost about four knots, and uh, we're burning 22.3 gallons per hour. So, we, we are saving a little fuel, uh, but we, at the expense of four knots, not terrible. And that's giving us a fuel economy. Actually, right now, ironically, it's still 7.9. But as I said before, winds change, so these numbers are skewed. So we're going to do the math on those. Reports of including the airport, 2,500 and below. It's still saying 48 when we get to the airport, but again, that's because the winds have changed and our ground speed has changed. So, let's do the math, shall we, on uh, the airspeed, the true airspeed with the fuel flow. All right, so if you take, if you take the true airspeed of 180 knots and you divide it by 23.5, we get a miles per gallon based on true airspeed of 7.659, so we'll call it 7.66. Now, if you go to the 2300 RPM setting, and we have a true airspeed of 176 knots, and divide that by 22.3, that gives us a true a mile per gallon of 7.892, so 7.89. So you can see there is a slight uh, gain in miles per gallon. All right, so 2300 RPM versus 2400 RPM. What's the advantages, disadvantages? Well, 2300 RPM, obviously the advantages are you get a little bit better fuel economy. So I figured it was about half a gallon. Uh, in this case, it's turning out to be even less than that. Uh, but you definitely have improved fuel economy. Another thing to consider is the noise level. It is actually quieter at 2300 RPM versus 2400 RPM. So if you don't have noise canceling headset, the Bose headsets like we do, and you just have regular headsets, um, that could come into play. Or if you have passengers in your airplane that aren't wearing headsets, or perhaps, you know, uh, little babies or even animals, dogs, cats, etc., you know, that's something to take into consideration. So how much difference is the noise level in, in this particular airplane? Well. Uh, we get a 2300 RPM. Kim actually has a dB meter, and it's currently showing about 85 to 86 decibels. It's like 86. 85 if you don't talk. <laughs> what, what's the dB level if I open the door and throw you out? It's going to be louder? We don't know because uh, it's going to be too loud. So it's about 85 decibels. Um, at, at the 2300 RPM. So, since we're doing all these uh, comparisons, let's go ahead and we'll bring the power setting back to 2400 RPM cruise. So that way we can get there a little bit quicker, make the day a little bit shorter, and let's see what the difference is. So now we're back at 2400 RPMs, and we notice about a 2 to 3 decibel, 2 to 3 dB louder. So, there's a slight change. Eh, you know, not huge. The plane doesn't suddenly get quiet at 2300 RPMs. So, those are our cruise settings. Wide open throttle, 2300 RPM or 2400 RPM. So, like I said, we're back at 2400 RPM. 
And we are back to burning uh, 23 and a half gallons an hour. Because I want to get there a wee bit quicker. So as we come in, as we begin our descent, we'll talk about our descent power settings. And then we'll talk about our power settings for the actual approach. So as always guys, if you like these videos, hit that thumbs up, subscribe button, because comment we can see you use your subscription on the channel. Be sure to uh, ring that bell and hit all for notifications. And uh, share this video with friends. Help us get to 100,000 subscribers. That's our goal, that's our race, that's what we want to get to. And uh, you can make that happen for us. So uh, that would be a big thank you for us, is help by spreading these, spreading the word about what we're doing and spreading these videos, sharing them with your friends. Well, you can see it's a beautiful day outside. There's not a cloud in the sky. So uh, it's probably not going to be a whole lot to see, a lot going on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, fast forward, check on out, and uh, we'll check back in with you as we get closer to the approach. All right, so there's the mountains. How high are we? We're 9,000 feet. And we are just barely but looks like just barely above these mountains. But, thank you for flight for confirming we are plenty above these mountains. But, is that... So, this, you can actually adjust the corridor width, hold on. Well, but that... So, the corridor width is one mile. Yeah, that's... So, let's make it two miles wide, and as he brings it up, if I bring it four miles wide, change it a little bit. I mean, it's not like we're going to hit that, but we right. can take it to 20. That's... Score seven yeah. turn left direct, Right, that's uh, that. You look for direct Nuru, correct? We are about 30 minutes out from Lexington County Airport. We are still level cruise, 9,000 feet. And as you can see, uh, spending a little time up at altitudes, Cam has decided to put on some O2. She was down there about 90% on her O2 level. I'm still about 95 when I checked it last. So um, it was as a good idea precautionary. She went ahead and put on some O2 so she can be Awake and alert. GSP is right there. We are approaching uh, GSP, Greenville, Spartanburg. Our uh, new home. I actually love to come to this area. So there is no weather reporting in Lexington County. If you come here to weather, you say no weather is observed. So we went ahead and looked at CAE's weather, which is, if you look on the map, it is, oops, it is right next to uh, the airport. And if you look on here, it shows on four flight that CAE is 10.7 miles northeast of the airport. So, based on there, the winds are 2906, so we're planning on flying a visual approach into runway 36. So, we were talking about uh, power settings, and I gave you my initial power settings. So, obviously, for takeoff, it's just uh, full power and props full forward, which is about 25.50 on the RPMs. So, full power, 25.50. Once we're in climb, I then pull the power back to 25 inches manifold pressure and 2,500 RPM. That is our climb setting. Uh, 25 inches and 2,500 RPM. This is a normally aspirated airplane, meaning that uh, it is not turbocharged. So as we get higher, at some point, uh, you know, I keep creeping in the power to keep it at 25 inches. At some point, I am wide open throttle and I can no longer get any more manifold pressure. At which point, we leave it alone, leave it wide open, and the manifold pressure will continue to decrease, but we leave it at 2,500 RPMs. Then once you're in cruise, you have a choice, you have many choices, but uh, I choose between 2,400 RPMs and 2,300 RPMs. And as we discussed, there's pros and cons to both. 23 is a little bit more economical. 24 is a hint faster. So you can decide what's best for you at each power setting. Right now I'm at 2400 RPMs and we're at 62% power uh, for these engines at this altitude. So once we begin our descent, uh, typically what I do is whatever uh, the manifold pressure is at that point, um, I will, if I'm not running the autopilot, I'll pull the power back Usually it's about 18 inches, so between uh, 3 and 5 inches, and I don't retrim, and I let the nose come down. So that does a couple things for me. Number one is as I nose over, I don't have to worry about my speed increasing too much. Um, I pretty much will stay at where I'm at right now while I'm in level cruise. Some people like to take advantage of the extra speed during descent. Nothing wrong with that. As long as the air is smooth, great. Otherwise, you can get into rough air. For me personally, typically, I... Um, 
I don't really see much of the game because you're only talking about a few minutes worth. So speeding up for a few minutes is like the guy on the highway that goes and speeds up and then he ends up being at the light with you anyways. So um, personally, I just tend to pull the power back, especially if I'm flying uh, by hand and not with the autopilot. Then once I level off, if I'm not ready for the approach, if they're giving me step downs, I'll just bring the power back to wherever it was when I was in cruise. So in this case, we're at 21.4, but typically I'll bring it back to there and I'm already trimmed. I don't have to retrim the airplane. So the set power settings, Basically, uh, 18 inches, give or take, but usually, um, you know, three to four inches of manifold pressure will typically let that nose fall over and give me a 500 foot per minute descent rate. Now, once we are on approach, I find that um, 18 inches manifold pressure is a good power setting for uh, getting my flaps and my gear um, down. You know, I'll do approach flaps, that'll slow me down a little bit. Uh, I'll drop my gear, that will slow me down some more. Typically at that point, at about 18 inches, I'm in the white arc. Um, but at 18 inches, it's too high for the actual approach. I'm going too, too fast at that to do a normal uh, descent. So I find in this airplane, about 20, uh, 16 inches is my approach power setting. 16 inches seems to give me the exact speed I want for approach. And I'll pretty much hold it as we descend. I continue to bring the power back because as you descend, the manifold pressure wants to increase. So I'll keep it at 16 inches. And uh, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'll, I'll talk you through it as I actually do it on the approach. But I wanted to give you some idea of what I'm doing and why, because obviously once I'm in approach, things will be happening faster. And I can't necessarily explain it um, as it's happening because, well, I gotta land and we're gonna run out of time, so. November 3175 Whiskey to send a maintain 5,000. 5,000, send 5 Whiskey, thanks. Alright, 5,000. Alright, I'm going to turn the autopilot off. Alright, pull the manifold back to 18 inches. Down and down at 500 feet a minute. All right, so we're going to go ahead and listen to Lexington County Unicom just to hear the traffic that's in the pattern because we're currently about 32 miles away. Now, because it's a Unicom, we'll actually hear other uh, potential Unicoms as well because we're still high and we're still a little far. But as we get closer, that'll narrow down. November 7-5, Whiskey, Procedure Axelian, Descent of Maintain, 2,500. Descent 2,500, seven for whiskey. Direct the airport. Okay, all right, well. 2,500, you said? Yes, 2,500. All right, give me direct enter. Hit enter. Lexington County traffic, you have a baron that is 10 to the north, the east will be entering a left downwind for runway 36, Lexington County. Uh, we've got the field, we can cancel with him. Okay. Columbia approach, Grand 3175 Whiskey, field in sight, we'll go ahead and cancel with you. Grand 3175 Whiskey, IFR cancellation received, Squawk VFR, free to change approved. Squawk VFR, thanks, 75 Whiskey. Yep, yeah, flip us. Trying. Alright, VFR, right, go. Good. We're gonna, I'm gonna pull off of him. Alright, I'll pause We're not listening to him anymore. Nope. So I was actually looking to okay. the left, the bigger brown spot, right. not the... Right. Lexington County, you have a bearing that is 5 to the northeast, entering a left downwind runway 36, Lexington County. Alright, bring the power back. Turning them up a little bit. Uh, back to 16 inches right now. Left downwind runway 5, Gotham County. Lexington County, every Baron in the midfield, left down one runway 36, Lexington County. We are below port flop approach speed, no flop approach. All right, we are beaming the numbers. Go ahead and go gear down. Gears going down. Got three green. The mirror. Three green, confirm, one, one in the mirror. Lexington County, every Baron turning a little Left base, runway 36, Lexington County. We're gonna over 
shoot this. Lexington County, every Baron turning final, runway 36, Lexington County. 500. Alright, 500 feet, we're at 3 green, flaps land, clear to land, off all pods away. We are 1 red, 1 white. Wind, though. Long across with an iron expecting. <laughs> Alright, power is back to 16 inches. The speed out. Power is back to actually all the way back. Oh, uh, we got a tailwind. According to that wind sock. There's 20. No, yeah. Just off the left. All right, power's out. Holding the nose, holding the nose. There you go. Pretty much. Nose, nice and smooth. Ugh. Off roll up, I'm not wasting my brakes to get off of Charlie. Difference between an aircraft owner and an aircraft renter. When I was a renter, I would have made Charlie. As an owner, I'm like, ah, no rush. So welcome to Lexington County. It took us, what are we, flight time, three hours, 35 minutes to get here? Yeah. Got 48 gallons of fuel left. Lexington County, a barren clear, runway 36, Lexington County. As always, if you like these videos, hit that thumbs up, subscribe button. Biggest comment we can receive is your subscription to the channel. Be sure to ring that bell for notifications and hit all. So we, we talked about my power settings. That's kind of what I do. I know I'll sit on approach. I didn't give you <laughs> as much info as I would have liked to have, but um, it's also a little different because I was getting gusty and windy and trying to get down so I pulled out more power than I normally would but if you're set up on a straight in or you're set up on an ILS um, the numbers I told you are definitely the way it works for sure. Anyway guys if you don't uh, already you can follow us on social media you can follow me at Beach Baron Pilot on uh, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine yards but Instagram is our big one and you can follow Kim at Flying SIC. If you haven't already stopped by Baron Pilot Shop, or if you haven't lately, go visit BaronPilotShop.com. You can find all kinds of goodies, sunglasses, jet shades, shirts, swag, all kinds of good stuff. So be sure to stop by. And I'd love to have a little uh, airport like this, quiet, nobody out here. I'm surprised that people aren't coming here doing touch and goes and stuff. Well, I haven't seen a fuel pump like this in a long time. Going old school on this. Okay. Alright, guys, till next time, stay safe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. So we're headed off to get some Mexican. No, this is not a courtesy car. They yes, it make, is. Well, it's, it's definitely a courtesy, but it's not a courtesy car. They don't give nice big trucks like this out. Special shout and thank you to Kyle over here in uh, Lexington County Airport. Um, this is the thing about aviation. Aviation is so nice and friendly, and then you add a small town on top of it, and now you just got double nice and friendly. So. Uh, I offered to buy uh, Kyle some, some lunch and if he would just drive us to get some food since no courtesy car here and instead he handed us the keys to his truck. Doesn't even know us. Uh, 